Hey there, friends and viewers. This is Hengus with TGN. And before we get into this video, folks, uh, I owe each and every one of you World of Warcraft fans here at TGN World of Warcraft an apology from the bottom of my heart. I never told you what was going on. I never told you where I went or what exactly is, you know, what, what's up with the Alpha Druid? Where did he go? Oh, my goodness. Operation Ramel, all that stuff. Um, basically, guys, I've been taking a bit of a break, as you can see. Uh, but what better way to return to World of Warcraft than to have this huge ass event happen um, inspired by the fact that the Guild Ruin organization known as Ruin Gaming has now officially decided to join TGN. Now you've already been made somewhat aware of this by videos in the past some of which have some quality issues that we're working to improve. Um, but this one, ladies and gentlemen, is basically just an announcement video. Later on, I will be interviewing the actual guild master of Ruin itself, uh, Mr. Arkeos. He goes by Arkeos. That is his main character's name. Uh, and let me just walk you through what exactly is going on in this video. So I talk with the man over the phone on Skype. He's a very nice guy. Um, and basically, I got an invite to the guild on Kill Jaden Alliance U.S., and <laughs> they took me through a regular old Tuesday on their guild agenda. Basically, we started off by meeting out at the West Bridge in Ogrimmar <laughs> with about 170 individual players, all level 85, all PvP geared, all know what they're doing. And basically, we rampaged through the entirety of Ogrimmar, just like a big-ass train, having a good time, having a good time. Oh, apologies, that's uh, my Mercury impulse getting a little bit out of control there. Anyways, after we were having a good time in Ogremar, we walked outside to the, uh, well, what, whatever that racetrack is called, uh, nearby, and they had a nice little event that they call the Turtle Races. Basically, anyone that has a turtle mount, which I think you get from fishing, um, races on this big-ass track, and they place bets. The winner gets 10,000 gold from the guild vault, and... This big event, you know, people flying all over the place. It was really fun. I've never seen anything like that in World of Warcraft before. I've never been a part of a raid of this size. Uh, and I've never, you know, actually seen that level of, basically, cooperation. That level of excitement in the game before. So thank you, Rune, for allowing me to experience this. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's very cool, after having played the game for about three years and, you know, experiencing this bland one-dimensional play, 25-man raids, etc., etc., battlegrounds and then just go into something of this size this magnitude was really an experience for me and, and it opened my eyes to just how versatile a game wow really is that most people don't get to experience uh, and i don't even know if there's another guild out there like ruin that does this kind of stuff so anyways after the turtle race the queue for tolbrad pop these guys make a point of being in tolbrad every single time i mean i don't know what they have going on there shifts clocks Coffee, I don't know exactly, but they own Tolbarad. I mean, I hadn't really been playing in Tolbarad on Gil Jaden since I server transferred, but my goodness, you can't even get into it. Just so happens I didn't get into Tolbarad because this entire guild queues, and they just go in there and they raffle stomp everybody. I mean, they won in like three minutes. It was, it was ridiculous. Anyway, so I didn't get in, um, unfortunately, but I did have the pleasure of testing the skill level of some of their guys. <laughs> just kidding. Um... I was just dueling some of their guys uh, in front of the Stormwind camp in in Tolbarat, having a good time. Met some friends and viewers. Um, that was fun to watch. And after that, we went over into the Valley of Heroes in Stormwind for the uh, weekly guild meeting, I believe. I think they do it every week. Where basically everybody lines up next to those statues over in the Valley of Heroes. Uh, it's, it's quite a scene to watch. I mean, just filming the sheer number of players that were actually logged in at the same areas in in the world is, is is quite entertaining to watch in its own um and there we have archaos you know he just he's their guild leader and he he talks about guild proceedings promotions uh most recently joining tgn basically ruin is not just a it's, it's not just a gaming guild it is an organization they go from all these different games and they've been doing it for about four years these guys are very legitimate and it's very cool to be a part of it uh, anyways, after the meeting, we decided to have uh, a little celebratory killing spree, let's just say. Um, we went to Thunder Bluff, and we said hello to Mr. What's Kieran's son? Bane Bloodhoof? Bane, Blaine Bloodhoof. Yeah, we went over there, we paid him a visit, and shortly after that, we rallied like freaking Lord of the Rings, Battle of the Pelennor Fields, uh, charging Rohan 
against Minas Tirith. You know that scene? Day! 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 Four Thalingers! That's exactly what it reminded me of. <laughs> Sorry, Nerd Instinct's taking over. Anyways, you get to see this amazing rally where just a little speech going on and they fly skycap high and then just nosedive into Ogremar into Grom Hellscream's not Grom, uh, Garage Hellscream's chamber. God, I've been playing WoW so long, or Warcraft so long, I'm already like confusing the lineages here. Anyways, you, you, you nosedive into Garage Hellscream's lair and basically the server's like kersplat! Dead. The server's dundee. And it just like, you get one frame, one frame per month. It's terrible. But anyways, we got the job done. We killed him. Um, and afterward, the, well, let's just say they claimed the city. Planted the banners everywhere. Took over the auction house. All this stuff. Now, one thing that people need to remember is that Ruin is just trying to have fun. And they get a lot of negative attention. Naturally. And of course, not everyone in the guild is a top end PvPer. Because there's thousands of people in the freaking guilds. I mean, they have like 3,000 members in World of Warcraft. And obviously, the guild cap, member cap in one guild is 1,000. So you do the math. That's three guilds um, that are all ruin related. And they all do the same shit. It's, it's madness. Uh, anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, I went ahead and I, I got an interview with Mr. Arkeos, the leader of the ruin guild. Uh, and man, this guy is quite busy. He just does a lot uh, on the business side of things as well. Rune is a growing organization, and we at TGen really want to help to promote uh, their awesome intentions. I mean, they just bring that that community brotherhood into video games, something that we we don't have anymore, especially not in these MMOs, it's like these small time, you know, organizations where is you have this gigantic one that coordinates these huge events. They communicate with the developers, test out PVPs, test out server stability, and you know, they're not violating the TOS or anything. These guys are just having a good time. And uh, thank you, Ruin, uh, in, ahead of time for letting me be a part of it. And we look forward to working with you guys in the future. I'd like to make some really sweet-ass videos with you, and not just World of Warcraft. So without further ado, guys, here's the interview with Mr. Arkeos. We've had people from, you know, the top PvP and PvE guilds going back to, well, prior to World of Warcraft. And we've seen the gamut of different philosophies and I think we found a fairly successful one here. So my objective is mostly just to make sure that we're providing a great guild environment that's taking care of the needs of what is a growing and very large you know, player base. We're talking about at least 3,000 people in World of Warcraft. We have wow. a lot of people who are inactive in, in and off of the rosters that we cycle in and out. At this moment, there are 995 people in the main branch with 144 online, those are all 85s in that branch, not including the other two in the Twink branches, or people who are on hiatus, which would be probably a good thousand more. Michael, I've kicked... just a moment. Are we recording this, Will? This is actually good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I started like in the middle of his uh, little Okay, bit. so your, your recording is on? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> right. Well, basically, like I said, the objective is to provide a good environment for people to be entertained, have fun, that's mature, that has standards, uh, that can be not only a good place to learn how to play, but also to do competitive, high-end play. Right, We've been right. Working on building, you know, a gladiator team and all that. But I'm not trying to build another Daramak tire. I'm not trying to build another ultra elitist uh, group. I think I think they're they're too commercial. I don't like the way that they handle things. And judging from the response we've got, we're First day that we said we were working with you guys, some people from Dara McIntyre started contacting us, saying, "You know, we're really not happy with the way things are run over here. You know, what's your sponsorship arrangement? Can we come over? We hear good things about your guild. I, they they don't seem to like the leadership over there because they're on a, a bit of a power trip or whatever else. Mm. And uh, that's that's the sort of thing I want to avoid. I want to be an organization where we are you know, a meritocracy and we're providing a good environment for people to have an yeah, upward and mobility and, and basically." lead to the best of their ability that shows in, in your sheer numbers as well i mean the, the the sheer disparity of people that you have i mean they're casual gamers all the way up to very hardcore that i've noticed uh all in the same guild so that just goes to show that you're not all about the elitism but i did have a question um you, you mentioned that there's like three different world of warcraft guilds three thousand plus people uh you are the guild master of ruin us or what exactly is your official title I run everything. Well, basically, my alts are the guild masters of all the branches. But okay. we, we, 
developed the system in, in Warhammer because it was a necessity. Uh, we had a situation there where the guild cap was 500 people, and it was an RVR game where we realized that, uh, unfortunately, overwhelmingly, the player base was divided up amongst a lot of smaller WoW-style guilds, and this created a situation in the larger scale RVR battles where there was a lot of too many chiefs and, and not enough Indians, and people would bicker over battlefield directions. And while people were bickering about who was in charge and whose authority in the coalition of these guilds you know, had sway or what's, whose idea was the best, and they would hesitate and they would lose battles. They'd lose keeps, they'd lose ground. And we recognized that that was simply ineffectual and we were tired of dealing with uh, basically other... Yeah, that's all that's left on the phone. And basically, it became something where we recognized the consolidation was the best solution to it to get results. And we started consolidating all of these different branches. I just had mm -hmm. a different alts as, as leader there. We assigned uh, guild commanders who would be sort of the de facto GM. Uh, we commuted through an, uh, communicated through an alliance chat system to keep everyone coordinated. And this gave us, uh, even in the face of overwhelming odds against us, uh, an advantage. Because as we found quickly, having 200 people on Ventrilo uh, would generally be much more coordinated than four or 500 people who were divided up against you know, a myriad of guilds. And so when we moved to what was the largest server at the time, Dark Crag and uh, Warhammer, we, were, we had re-rolled as uh, the underdog faction. We all had level retarded characters and level ones <laughs> and whatever. And, but we were all very well organized, and we decided, you know, we'll go take on the strongest PvP guilds uh, in the world that are playing here, and there were a lot of big names in it, and they were pushing to be the world first in that game to kill the king and do all these things. And then we showed up around Christmas, and uh, we began to win battles against them with nothing. Just through sheer just bravado, we won battles with level nothings, level 10s and 12s against max level people and, and full raid and PvP Jeez. gear. Simply because we knew how to work as a unit, we knew how to do a lot of uh, scare tactics and, and aggressively maneuver a lot of people. We put our high levels in the front of the units, and they just assumed that everyone behind them was really high level. In fact, they they weren't. So we could you know maneuver these guys really aggressively all at once. And a lot of times, the the groups we were fighting weren't used to a unified force, and they just panic and they would fall back and they make mistakes, and we would we would win. And uh, there was a series of changes that were put into the game to stop us. You know, they made it so there were, there were level restrictions on which you could have in defending fortresses. Then they put a number caps. They, they tried all sorts of things to stop us. But every time they tried to do those things, it was already too late. Our people had already, you know, leveled up. Right. And, and we eventually reversed things on the server. And our faction ended up getting the world first. The king kills, and we got a lot of notoriety. Uh, and it was an interesting circumstance because all of the open RVR, the serious PvP servers, ended up one by one being merged down and then collapsed into our server. And so we went through who was who of all the PvP guilds in the world, and we basically crushed all of them. And that's where we built up our following. But by the time Aeon came out, Warhammer was dead. The fact of the matter was they had made a lot of bad decisions because of what uh, I think EA had done. They basically wrote off Warhammer, decided not to continue to invest in it, and moved the staff over to help over with uh, obviously with Star Wars, and so that's why the situation exists that exists there now, uh, mm -hmm. where they are working on their PvP, and you can see a lot of the hallmarks of the Mythic team in in Star Wars. And though it looks a lot like World of Warcraft, so did Warhammer. But at its core, it's much more similar to Warhammer and the way that it functions than it is to actually World of Warcraft. Yeah. There's a lot of basic uh, mechanics and so on, which are much more similar to the Mythic system. Uh, and so we will see how that plays out. And I think, honestly, uh, Gabe, who's their, their main PvP designer, is gonna, we're going to see some more uh, Hallmark system from Warhammer and from, from Mythic in general and so on. Integrated into the Old Republic? Yes, absolutely. You can see it in the loot system. You can see it in the PvP system. You can see it in the bolster system. So, yeah, that's exciting. Uh, you, you mentioned you started in Warhammer, so that would have been, what, uh, four years ago or so? Yes, we were previously a raid guild in World of Warcraft before that, and then we were in Age of Conan. Uh, but we were looking to go for a more hardcore PvP environment uh, as far back as like Burning Crusade, and that's why we went uh, initially to uh, Conan. And it was a gorgeous game, and in fact, 
I, I applaud them for doing what they tried to do. They just didn't have the funding, nor did they understand the extent of the difficulties that they'd have in making a fully voiced over game. Right. It's not easy. You know, one of our guys, actually, our, my chief financial officer, used to work for them, one of their de developers, and uh, they didn't realize what they were up against, and they subbed out all the work to Chinese programmers, and the, the quality of the work was not good. And so a lot of the issues and, and quality of, of testing was not there. And if you played Conan, you're, I'm sure, aware of the enormity of the technical difficulties that they faced. And it was not successful in large part due to that, the poor quality of the beta testing. So, so just to recap, I mean, Ruin is this gigantic army of PvP players that have been moving from game to game since Warhammer and just <laughs> owning servers. I mean, based yes, on my experience. Yes, basically, we go to servers, <laughs> and then by the time we're done, they are, they are just wiped out. There was a uh, massive imbalance in the favor of the Horde on our, our WoW server. We came here because it had a tremendous reputation for being a very strong world PvP server, having a lot of very active Horde guilds that were raiding cities, and we weren't disappointed. When we came here, they were constantly attacking Stormwind, dominating the trade district, doing the stuff we were doing. They had guilds like those boat camping jerks who were very large, who were basically like professional round the clock griefing guilt. They were just out there griefing raid portals and boats and the trade district just all day long to be huge, huge asses. And that was what attracted us here. We said, you know what, our, our biggest issue as an organization is that we need to keep a lot of people entertained. And the way in which we do that is we take on a really big challenge and we find really stubborn opponents so that we don't run out of people to kill because Absolutely. our biggest enemy is not the enemy faction, it's boredom. We've got to keep these people entertained, give them events and things to do. And so going forward into Star Wars, our, our whole guild charter, our whole reason for being, our whole mission statement is seeking out really big, arrogant PvP guilds that think they're good and just slowly <laughs> devour them. Just <laughs> literally destroy them from within, just erode their willingness to fight, you know, fight for you know, 20 hours straight until they've given up and then roll over them. That's the sort of stuff that we pulled in Warhammer. We'd have shifts of people logging in and coming out to the battle, and you would just wear people down. Mm. You know, and eventually they would just give up. That's how we started getting our first like, city kills there. They would have a massive offensive. They'd get like 20, 30 of their biggest PvP guilds together. They'd say, guys, we're going to take six hours. Nobody leaves. We're going to keep pushing this position until we get it because we're going to get the world first tonight. And they get all of these people pumped up from these really hardcore raid guilds, and they would just hammer us, come in with everything they got. We would actually have a system called like a siege call system yeah. where there were initially it was just a general siege call, which was, okay, everyone, like if you're just sitting around the city looking for something to do, there's a fight out here. Let's come out. And then there was like a mandatory siege call for the high, high levels, which was, okay, all high levels have to come out, drop your PvE, it's pretty bad. And then there was the, oh shit, this is an alarm clock raid, they've brought out 600 people, we need everyone, even if you're level retarded, grab a pitchfork because we're going to lose the city, we're going to lose <laughs> all the territory right now. 600 if, um, people, huh? Yes. On some of the battles, they recorded over 600 people that came out, and these guys were desperate. Like, they were notorious for this. They set an alarm clock raid on Valentine's Day to take our city. <laughs> and they came out in huge numbers early in the morning to do this, assuming that, well, I know that, like, the guys are at ruin. A lot of, like, officers have girlfriends, and they're going to be out, and this is a good chance for us to just do this. And uh, so they, they came skates. in, and they got into our city, and uh, we heard about this. I got like a call, like, you got to do something, get back here. So we were able to get the, the first and only, as far as I'm aware, successful uh, <laughs> defense of a city where we physically pushed them out during the looting, looting phase. And it was sort of a big joke that we had uh, accomplished this. And uh, all the Warhammer developers at the time were actually sort of trash talking <laughs> that it happened. And they put up a, uh, a clip of like Harrison Ford in the Air Force One movie kicking the, the Russian guy off the back of the plane. And they, <laughs> they put in guild bars for like RKOs for me and then Axum, who was the leader of the other coalition, bit, getting thrown out. Because they had never really designed that, that so that you would lose so badly that as an offensive force you'd actually get kicked out of your looting phase. Uh, so awesome. we, we made a lot of enemies during that period. You know, we tried out Aeon, but you know, the, the gamer base just didn't like it. We had a full event of 200 people. If you can you know, log into our event now, you can see what it's like. There's probably 120 people, 140 mm -hmm. people online right now. We just won Tol Barad. I've got to get a raid dealer for these guys in yeah. a second. Um, that's a but, that's a good transition to to the next question. <laughs> uh, Ruin obviously gets a lot of, of negative attention uh, based on just what you do. You know, you go in and terrorize players that are trying to 
whatever, buy something at the auction house or what have you. Uh, and so the, the it's kind of like this viral thing where everyone knows Rune is kind of this asshole guild that goes around and, and crucifies people. I mean, um, how do you respond to that? I mean, oh, we found even... out long ago you cannot make everyone happy and that trying to make everyone happy in the form is futile. Mm -hmm. And then we I mean, also learned that there's no such thing as bad advertisement. Like, it literally, honestly, at the end of the day, being notorious or being infamous is every bit as useful for our purposes as being famous. And the people that we're trying to attract are not the type of people that we want to have, com like having compunction about PVPing on our PVP server. Yeah. But moreover, there's, there's a little bit of like a moral indignation from this faction too, that they were oppressed so long under guilds like boat camping jerks. And there was so much pent up anger towards the situation where they had been dominated by three to one odds for the vast majority of the years of the server. And then we come along and give them a, a chance to literally just exact revenge on all these hated guilds and uh, you know just take out all their frustrations. And that's why the people are so nasty. It has a lot more to do with that than any specific policies we've put in place. This is like mm -hmm. revenge killing. It's political and so on. <laughs> you know, there's, and there's a lot of people who transfer from this guild or that who are like living out some like old grievances like last what was it sunday i'm in this run we had all these horde players who had transferred into our guild who are on my team and so we end up getting a team from our server and our rated battleground and this guy comes out like an nj godfather and all of them start freaking out on vent because this guy had screwed them over like in the last expansion on some loot drop that they wanted and they were all on the run and they hate him and he got him banned and so the entire match devolved immediately from being any sort of strategy just to them like trying to kill each other in the middle of the field. Nobody went for the flags. It was just like revenge killing. They hated him. That guy and those guys there hated these guys for coming over. And that's all it was. So there's a lot of like pent up animosity and rivalries on mm -hmm. servers like this. And to be honest, that's great. I mean, that's <laughs> fine. And I mean, I, I encourage that sort of thing. I think that player driven stuff like that is much more inventive and uh, more entertaining for us in the first place. I agree. And that's, and that's what we, we believe in. Hun, do you want to get ready? I'm going to pick the raid. Yeah. The, the reason, uh, I mean, we play games is to experience things that we can't experience in real life. And if you can generate that sort of rivalry in a digital no. world, I mean, you can't really experience that anywhere else. Right. No, ab absolutely. I mean, the player-driven content is very important. I mean, honestly, in many other games, that that was the end game. Look at Star Wars Galaxies, or even look at most of the uh, DAOC and and other RVR games. It was the rivalries between guilds. I mean, of course, Eve is the ultimate expression of that. It's probably a game that's much more fun to talk about than it is to actually play. But the intrigues and the scamming and the the dirty down uh, downright just nasty stuff that goes on in those mega corporations. Mm -hmm are huge and and beyond that like that's always fascinated us a lot of our guys actually came from eve and that that comes with them the, the level of dirty play that they do far outpaces anything in world of warcraft and or any other game i've seen and it's an international game it's all on one server so like the the national grievances come out to play like the russians and the big bad guys oh, there wow. but realistically they also have other groups that like really hate them like on a, a deeply like nationalist level like for instance the Finns have parked their space right up next to the Russians and they've been fighting them like since the game came out and they've never lost their territory to <laughs> which is the entire like story of Finland and that's how they fight and like it is that is their shtick is we fight Russians all day because we like frigging hate them so that that is their shtick and you see the others group that, that do the same thing and uh, you know the Americans have their own interests and it, a lot of the, the the nationalistic things come out the british and the australians and the americans are usually pretty tight-knit and have, have gotten together to fight the russians but at times uh, of crisis they've worked with the russians against other groups and then of course there are other nationalities that are, are uh, represented there mm -hmm. so to all the tgn viewers out there listening uh, ruin is about having fun not making your life miserable but the two can go hand in hand <laughs> We've always had a defensive posture when it comes to these things. Once again, we came here because the server had a reputation of Horde just griefing and dominating it for years, which was true. And so once again, our whole situation was, hey, guys, you can't just let Horde raid groups just sit in your cities, camping your auction houses, killing your faction leaders at will and just do nothing. It's not acceptable for me to say, oh, I've got a raid, so I'm not going to even bother to help anyone else in my faction with... Uh, with doing their content. I mean, to me, that was never acceptable. And we said, look guys, it's time for you to just fight back. 
We'll organize you. We'll train you. We'll do the PvP uh, that's required to get you some self-respect back. And we can beat these guys. We can turn this around. And obviously, that's a comp- been accomplished with, with <laughs> no question at this point. Absolutely. But when we came here, poor, like it was, it was so badly dominated. It was back during uh, basically... Uh, Wrath of Lich King, and they had the Wintergrass situation. Our faction had defended Wintergrass once successfully in the like year and change that that had been out. Like literally, their success rate was negligible. They like lost every single time. They could not defend. And by the time we got done with it, we had locked it down so severely that they literally could not fight back. They could not win. Uh, we were in there with three groups of 40 because it was a 120 on 120 on like Tol Barat, which is 80 on 80. We'd have a ray group at each one of the major locations to lock it down. And we were just industrial farming these guys. We have some videos <laughs> of that. We have like 16 siege engines camping there at their spawn point. And then on, on the offenses, we would actually parachute in 60, 70, 80 people to their spawn point. And as they would zone in, we would just literally uh, AWE them all down at once, 120 horde, one big pile of death, and they learned to just hate us. That was how we started killing off their, their will to fight back with stunt, stunts like that. And uh, it's certainly something we enjoyed. We have a lot of funny footage from that stuff. I'm sure mm-hmm. we can get to you guys. Yeah, I, I mean, I really look forward to it, guys. Uh, Ruinous is a ruin, US, or ruin the guild, the organization more properly, is uh, now officially a part of TGN, and I really look forward to getting some sweet ass footage with you guys, like I did the other day in this video. Uh, and, and not just World of Warcraft, guys, these guys plan on going into any PvP game. I mean, Star Wars is your main focus in the near future, of course. Um, but, I mean, you guys are in it to win it, are you not? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Members. We're certainly looking forward to Star Wars. Obviously, we're going to continue to go strong and well, uh, build up our high-end teams, our raid teams, and, and look for talented players. But at the end of the day, that's not our, our focus. I don't actually, I've never agreed with the arena system and wow. Oh, I, I'm I prefer, so with you right now. <laughs> well, it's clear at this point that Blizzard has moved away from it towards RBGs, which I approve of. I, I don't agree with their decision to remove the 15-mans. I think that the 15-man matches were designed for 15 people, and they were fine with 15 people and we did just fly in getting our 15 man groups in but apparently other people had issue getting you know mm-hmm. 14 other human beings to, to play with them so they pandered uh in blizzard fashion i, think yeah, I agree and man and then maybe do- if we can actually take over the planet of Corybound in old republic <laughs> i'm so there our unfortunately from what our beta testers say that is not currently possible but i will spoiler alert i understand they are putting in the pvp legs on the two planets that have not been released so far, and there will be a lot of heavy, heavy fighting and open-world uh, objective-based PvP. We know that's going in. It's going to be a, that form of, of PvP. And so realistically, there will be a lot of, of heavy, no-holds-barred fighting. Yeah, I got you. I'm invited right now. Yeah, that sounds really fun. And you sound like you're busy, sir, but friends and views you heard it from the guild leader of ruin himself archaos is that how you pronounce it is yes your, correct your primary alias is archaos yes correct um stay tuned for a lot of videos from these guys coming i'll be doing some collabs with them of course uh and we'll be working with some of their individual members to get their video production skills up to par um absolutely <laughs> and we look forward to having a awesome mutual relationship with you guys in the future Thanks Absolutely. for joining me, Archaos. This has been Hangus with TGen, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye bye.